piece. Uh, willfully, this is the last time that I'm going to be elaborating on this Rachel Dolezal incident, but there's a few other things that I wanted to mention that I didn't mention in my other video. And after seeing some more of the media that's being spread, I think that it's important for me to elaborate further on this. Um, a f probably about a few weeks ago or something like that, I posted an article on my website. You can read it at atlantisschool.blogspot.com or just go to Google and put in Atlantis School and my article will come up. It's dated, so you know that I posted this weeks ago. But the article is part one of a part two series called The Amazing Race. And one of the things that I explained in the article is what race actually is. And a lot of people don't understand it, that it is a sociological term. It is pseudoscience. Race is not based upon uh, biology or anything like that. Um, you take it all the way back to the 1900s of Europe, not the United States, Europe, you start seeing the, the basis of race starting to be formed. Take it all the way up to the 1920s here in the United States and you have uh, an anthropologist who's Caucasian by the name of Ernest Elbert Hooten that used comparative anatomy to codify what race actually is. So what he did is he took uh, uh, an anatomy scale and put white folks on one end and blacks and monkeys on the other end. <laughs> and he began to codify what race actually is as far as supremacy and inferiority. And that is when race and racism begin to be actually codified. It doesn't mean that the idea of racism didn't exist. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is it was codified in a comparative anatomy perspective based upon the work of anthropologist Ernest Elbert Hooten. So like I said, if you want to go check out my article, which is uh, give you a lot more insight into what is going on, just go to atlantisschool.blogspot.com. And it's part one of the article, and then I'll be posting part two, you know, in the next week or so. And when you understand what race is, you understand that it is an illusion. <laughs> you know, there's no white genotype. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You have people who have more melanin than other people. But the idea of a white race and a black race is is basically pseudoscience. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when you hear someone like Rachel Dolezal saying that she doesn't identify with being white, if you understand what race and racism is, then you can understand like, oh, okay, maybe she's not buying into this construct that has no basis in science. I can understand that, you know. Um, at the same time, when you look at the decisions that she's made in terms of disassociating and disconnecting from her parentage, that's not right and exact. Um, anyone that does that, it speaks to some degree of trauma that they must have suffered as a child that makes them feel and think that they want to disassociate and disconnect from their parentage. She's not alone in that instance because there's people that do that all the time. We have people in our own families that do that. For example, you may have a parent who was raped by a man and had a child out of that circumstance. And that child may not want to identify with that father or that parent because they, you know, want to disassociate and disconnect from that trauma. You may have the mother who was raped that wants to disassociate and disconnect from the child that was born out of that because she may feel that you know that trauma is something that she doesn't want to reconcile you have situations where children were born out of incest and that child may not want anything to do with the parents you see that in various different ways um, in terms of um, ancestry you also see decisions made, being made based upon trauma like that because of religion I've known people who felt that they grew up in a strict religious household and, and because of that, they don't want nothing to do with Christianity. They don't set foot in the church. They don't talk to Christians, you know, they, and they just, they disown their Christian parentage and heritage. You know, I've seen people do that for a lot of different reasons. And that is one thing that's important to keep in mind in this sense here with Rachel Dolezal. There was some trauma that happened there. And there is some reason why she wants to disassociate from her parentage and define herself in a whole different perspective culturally. 
you know um, one of the things that also comes to mind is because the type of platform that I have I deal with people all over the world on various different levels that come from various different perspectives and there are some Caucasians that I've come in contact with that are basically embarrassed by their parents they don't want nothing to do with their family because of the level of racism or the, the trauma that they dealt with growing up in an environment where you had people that were like that now whenever I come in contact with people like that regardless if they're white regardless if they're black and they disassociate from their black parentage and want to be more white so they're doing everything to identify with being white and accepted and assimilated whenever I come in contact with a person like that I always encourage them to reconcile that trauma figure a way out to get an understanding of why you want to disconnect and disassociate because it's impossible to actually do that that is your family for life it doesn't mean that you have to be around them it doesn't mean that you have to accept them but it does mean that you need to get an understanding because you share something and if especially if it's an apparent you have half of what their proclivities and propensities were to deal with certain challenges in life you carry that around with you every day because that is half of who you are. So getting an understanding of them and what they've gone through and why you felt that you were in a traumatic experience is important. You know, so I always encourage people to do that. Find out um, what actually happened and why you want to disconnect or disassociate. And it's important to learn to reconcile that. So that's, you know, the second point. She's dealing with something. And if you go back and look at the interview and her parents talking, you can see that there was something there that they didn't really elaborate or discuss or take responsibility for. She's just simply saying, I don't quit you, 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 you. And there's a lot of people that do that, you know, and I don't think that that is right because it shows that you have unresolved issues. And if you can't figure a way out to resolve issues with your own family that you were given, then it automatically presents challenges to you to be able to resolve issues with the family that you're striving to create. The third point I want to make is, as this narrative has begun to circulate <clears throat> about Rachel Dolezal, I've been seeing a lot of black people standing up and criticizing other black people about how misinformed and miseducated and easily manipulated and poor judges of character that we are because we let this interloper come amongst us and front for so long. So I see a lot of people going along with that type of commentary. Yeah, that's right. How could y'all be played like that? It amazes me about how ignorant y'all could be, this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. And now that this narrative is being circulated, I see a picture starting popping up and being circulated right on the tail end of this of Rachel Dolezal standing next to the state attorney, Marilyn Mosby, who's over the case in Baltimore right now, the young black attorney. So... What does that imply? What it implies is if all of y'all black people are so ignorant and misinformed and easily manipulated and poor judges of character and easily fooled, what does that say about this prosecuting attorney that's over this big high profile case right now with these six Baltimore police officers being charged in the murder of this man? What does that say? Since they're like this so if y'all black people are so ignorant and misinformed and easily fooled she must be too so it implies that there is some degree of incompetence in this prosecuting attorney and when you are going to start seeing the flaws crop up in this case and it being manipulated in a way to support the interests of those who want to see these officers not charged those of y'all who've been sitting up here putting black people on trial you're not gonna have nothing to say because obviously if all of y'all black people is ignorant and misinformed and poor judges of character this prosecuting attorney is too because she's like this with Rachel Dolezal so be mindful don't take nothing on face value stay informed and don't take nothing on face value. You know, watch the way the media spins stories in order to reinforce um, what I said in the last video about social economic engineering. Striving to reinforce a certain status quo. And don't be so easily um, pulled into 
commenting on certain things or liking certain things or sharing certain things in order to increase the type of analytic data that allows a lot of these companies or these institutions or government agencies to get a pulse on what they can put out next to have people become more sheeple <laughs> so i will this was inspiring empowering those educating and gave those of you a little bit more insight into some of the thoughts about this rachel dolezal media firestorm number one learn about a working definition of what race actually is you can go to my article atlantisschool.blogspot.com or just put atlantis school in google and it'll go directly to my website number two trauma be mindful that whenever you see people who are disassociating and disconnecting from their parentage or history or ancestry there's some trauma that goes on that's going on there and if anything strive to encourage people to find effective healthy ways to reconcile those issues a lot of people deal with that not just rachel dolezal and number three pay attention to how this story is being spun to paint a picture of the incompetence of marilyn mosby peace